Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is enjoy. Enjoy. Now I wonder, do we really enjoy the Lord? Do we enjoy serving the Lord? Talked about it Sunday, do we enjoy worshiping the Lord? You know, if you really begin to see him as we ought to, then we have no problem worshiping him. We have no problem enjoying him. But we also have to understand that when there's sin in our lives and that convicting spirit that comes with the Holy Spirit, that he has to convict us and show us the error of our ways, that's not always enjoyable. You know, when we're getting that lesson, being, being taught that lesson or being put to that test, it's not always an enjoyable experience. But besides all that, besides all the temporary circumstances and the things that we may face on a day-to-day basis here on earth, there is coming a day that because if we have trusted him as our Savior, if we have complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ and we have made him Lord of our life, then if we have done that and we live accordingly and we continue to to press after him and and long for him and continue to serve and worship him and, and literally just make him Lord of our life, then there's enjoyment that will come, not in the way of circumstances, not in the way of necessarily material possessions and things like that, but we will be able to enjoy our salvation. And that's not just being saved here. That's ultimately being saved from the pit of hell. And so we get to really experience salvation when we get to experience heaven. So you think about it because it's at that moment, it's at at the time that our life is over here on earth, that then we get to enjoy one way or the other. We are getting the rewards for the decisions that we make. So if we chose Christ, then we enter into our reward in heaven. And if we rejected Christ, then we enter into our reward of hell, eternal punishment in hell, because the wages of sin is death. So the cost of sin is death. So you get what you pay for. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you don't have to pay that price. You don't have to go that route. You can accept that free gift, right? Now, just thinking about that, even in in terms and in context of what's going on with Isaiah, as we're in Isaiah chapter 12 today, and you'll see a hymn or a song of praise here in a very short chapter. But just to think about this, that he's saying, okay, well, there's coming a day when, if you go back to... um, Isaiah 11, and you see the things that he was talking about that would happen in the future and the way everybody was going to be in harmony because sin would be eradicated and then things would be the way that God intended. Then there's a song of praise to enjoy the salvation that you've experienced. Now, for those who had faced captivity physically, this would have had even that much more of a uh, of a way to get to their heartstrings. To say, look, not only am I going to be physically rescued, but I'm going to be spiritually rescued as well. So today, let's look at that that song that's here recorded in Isaiah chapter 12. And we'll look at verses 1 through 3 today. And he says, and in that day, you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. I love the, even the picture of thirst and water and, and the wells and, and from Christ that the water will never run dry. You'll never thirst again, as he tells the uh, woman there, the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter four. Now, just to think about that, he says, look, you will you will never thirst again. And so we get to draw from that well of salvation when we experience So you experience salvation and and it's great excitement to know and realize what you've been saved from. But what happens is over time, it seems that unfortunately, many believers today have gotten over that excitement. They've gotten over that enjoyment of their salvation. It's become, as we talked about Sunday, right? It's become like it's a burden to worship the Lord. It's a burden to serve him. It's what Malachi was speaking against, what the Lord was using him to speak against. He's saying, look, you you saying that the sacrifices are are too much and it's too much of a process and you just you just want to hurry up and get it over with. 
And that's the way that we have become. So let's get back to enjoying our salvation. Let's get back to enjoying a time, time with the Lord, enjoying even now having salvation. Ultimately, in glory, we're going to get to fully experience it. But why wait to be, start enjoying your salvation? Part of enjoying it is realizing that God has bought you with a price, and that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. And so if he bought you with a price, then we should do everything we can to repay him, even though we cannot. So why don't we simply follow his word? Know that to obey is better than sacrifice. So why don't we obey his word? Stop worrying about what you need to give, what you need to do. That, that's secondary. There are things that we need to sacrifice, things that we need to do. But first and foremost, we need to glorify God. We need to worship him and we need to be obedient to his word. That's the way that we enjoy our salvation. And that's the way that we worship him and let God know that we're enjoying our salvation. Because in our enjoyment, we're willing to be obedient to anything he would ask us to do. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.